You want to create slick Spider-Man animations like this? And like this? Watch this Spider-Man animation analysis to discover how, coming right up. Hey, what's up animators? Rusty here from Rusty Animator. I've been a professional animator myself for five plus years in VFX games and TV. And in this channel, we create weekly videos that help you animate at a higher level so you can quickly reach your dream job in movies or games without massive college debt. Here you'll find a mix of how-to videos, guides, tutorials, and live events just like this one. So if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and ringing the bell below. This video is a replay of a live Spider-Man animation analysis that I did with students and members of the Rusty Animator Facebook community. And this is part one of two. In each video, you'll learn so much that you can apply to your own animations for both stronger mechanics and just making awesome demo reel shots. So let's jump right in. There's gonna be a lot of takeaways that I have with this. And this time, as opposed to the God of War one that I did, I'm just gonna let the animation kind of come to me and kind of um, tangent off and wherever I have an idea or something that pops into my head that could be useful for you. Here, right off the bat, we'll just watch this uh, crowd fight sequence. There's a lot of great things here and a lot of areas where I see that it could be improved. And we're going to have that, I think, a lot through all the Spider-Man stuff that you look at. And in comparison to the God of War one that we did, I think you'll see that it's less polished. And whenever I make critiques on this stuff, I want to make clear that it's not about judging the animators of the studio for the work that they've done. It's about looking at where these things can be improved so that, you know, we as artists know how to do our job better, how to make the game more immersive from just handling our own skills better. Um, so one of the first things right off the bat, the web, the web shooting is cool. It's not too complicated from an animation standpoint. What I love about it though is how it transitions, he transitions into using the environment. Like how often do you see this on a demo reel where someone has thought about what's in the scene, not just the animation, but what's in the scene and then how like thinking in the game context of things where they can use the environment in the way that your character would to have like some kind of attack combo out of it. So here he rips the door off and spins it around. So that's pretty cool. Nobody except Spider-Man would probably choose to shoot their web at a door and rip it off. Um, you know, they would have some other gadget or they would never even use that in the first place. So that is a major unique difference to this animation just off the bat, taking into account your character, taking the time to design your character if you're a student animator that's trying to make a demo reel piece. Um, you know, this is really important. Or even if you're just practicing for yourself because having the character gives you the idea to do these kinds of things. So he's spinning this thing around. And what I love about the spin is that, you know, we can really see the arm is dragging behind. That means this chest is really leading the spin. And by extension, the arm is then leading for this door. This, this, this door should always feel like it's dragging behind this and trying to catch up in the spin. And then as the spin continues, you know, he's shifting his weight like he should. There's a little bit of sliding from game cycles, but that's kind of how it goes. So the spin speed increases and then he finally lets it whip into a jump. So you could, as this spin speed increases just before he lets it go, you could have him from just the hip standpoint, drop the hips more to really sell the pop up. It's a little weak right now. We don't really read this change. There isn't much of an ease. So we could pop down into that a little stronger, show it a little, little bit more ease spacing wise. And then this pop-up would be more explosive. 
but he pops up to swing the door forward and it has great arc coming across where I think this could be a little bit better is how that arc just kind of disappears right here. You see how it gets pretty linear. Like this, it goes from having the spacing to just completely straight like that. So I think you could have, to keep it more organic, you could have it curve a little bit through that section so it's not quite linear through there. It's a minor thing. And if any, if, you know, any animator that would watch our, us talking about this stuff would say, this is nitpicky, no one's ever gonna see that. But as animators, we know that if we fix those little things, it would feel even more organic, would feel even more natural, more powerful. And even if you didn't see it, you would feel it. And that's you know, where the skill in animation is. So, so it's still pretty successful. I mean, it's, it's just a cool idea. It's a cool animation to whip that thing around. And so we're totally into that. It's, it's a lot of fun to do. And anyone who's gonna play this game isn't going to you know, just say that animation was crap or this door didn't make any sense. It works. Um, and this bit is pretty sweet. So this is this is one of his finishers or takedowns, I, I guess. Uh, he like counters here with a punch and then he slides under, very slick move into this double kick. And this again feels cool because we, you know we get to see the kick very clearly, and then we get to feel how that impacts the guy and launches him forward to the wall. And there's a lot of cool things here as far as posing goes. Like I said, we can see it very clearly. They're thinking about the timing quite a lot. Um, the timing, the spacing, the silhouette to make sure that we read this first kick and then the second kick. The slide is very clear. We got a lot of frames of seeing that. You'll also notice that he's going from this squash shape to a stretch shape into a squash, right? And you always wanna be kind of working within those two shapes because it gives the animation a lot of impact a lot of organic feeling like he's a real character. Um, it's just essential. And then we could have actually, because you just noticed that, we could have a little bit more stretch here as these two animations hook up. And I think very clearly what you're starting to see or what you already have noticed is that these are two different cycles they have to be because they just kind of pop into place. They go from one frame here to one frame there and you notice that he's really just slowing down into this position and all of a sudden he's like click up here, right? That's part of the game thing, game challenge of however the game operates or the deadline that the animator had or whatever it is. Um, you'll also notice a stylistic choice that they're, that, they're, that they're making and you're gonna see them continue to make in their animation. So, we got like a two frame hold. He's just frozen in space and you don't see that in 3D very often. This is just, usually this is like a 2D thing. And it's like they really want us to see that, hey, I've kicked the guy and then I've kicked him again. And they're, they're kind of emphasizing that too with, with this like impact effect and Spider-Man's like Spidey sense stuff going on. Um, personally, I find that this detracts from the impact. What do you think? So I think this detracts because what it's reading, see if you can catch it at full speed. It's reading almost like a stick and stop. And I feel like it would be better if you hit that pose and then maybe you had, well, what you did before that pose is you shot the leg out for one frame and then shot it back and then started easing out like very, very slightly with your spacing and then dropping back down to the ground after the kick is done. Um, and so what I mean by that, let's see if that makes sense. So I'd probably like shoot that leg out to show that I hit him 
And then in the next frame, I would bring this leg back, something like there. And then just start easing out from the top of this to go back down. And I think that would show the kick as well as you know, deliver the impact that we want in, in the move. So that I think would be like the way to improve this, this takedown even further to be a bit smoother and more, more natural. Um, the other thing is, you know, the, to me, it's very clear, like even in this, how he just kind of drifts and goes into a slide. The other character's trying to hook up into his cycle as well. And then like the, like the blending here between cycles, I would want to improve all of these and even improve it here, how he, he starts with a counter. Yes, the, the hand doesn't quite hook up. Of course, it happens so fast, you might have not noticed when you first played it. Um, this is, again, the cycles trying to, to line up. But I would, again, want to smooth out this transition from here so that it's not quite just kind of slide in place, get into my slot, the start of the slide cycle. Um, I think there's a better way to do this. It would be probably make, like punching with the other arm, like punching, if you punched with the other arm instead for this counter, instead of going this way, he would be the other way and you'd be you know, leading with this arm and then you can just relax into the shape, which I think would be more of a natural hookup for the two cycles. And when you go into the slide, it would be, I think this would be so much smoother if he just slid through and then immediately went into the squash to do the pop up and jump. And obviously they've made the decision that the player here is going to decide to click a button and do the kick or do something else in the game. But if you go that route, you have obviously less control with the animation to make it feel natural. So that's why now that we've studied it, you watch this and it feels a little, a little clunky through, through all these cool moves. It's still very cool because of the idea and the poses and everything is executed pretty well. It's just got those, those few moments where it kind of, hitches a little bit. And if you're going to make this like a demo reel shot for you, you obviously would want to make that much smoother than it is. All right. All right. Before we go any further, let me ask you, are the animation insights that I'm sharing with you so far helpful? Yes or no? Let me know with the YouTube card above or by commenting below. I'd love to hear what you think. So here we're going to expand a little bit and talk about this really cool idea that they have with the game to go into almost like an in-game cinematic for epic moves like this. So this is epic demo reel shot material. If you can kind of show maybe just like a character fighting into in a normal context, like third person view, like they would for a game and then snap into this cinematic slow down moment. It just like, Whoa, that was cool. You know, you really get to see all your handiwork as an artist up front. He shoots his web out from this compressed position. We really see the body working here to get the pull before he moves, which is good. And then the first thing that happens is the camera starts to punch in and I have to like, yeah, we need the game. We need some uh, more gameplay footage that has a little higher res here to work with the motion blur, but think we can still see the big shapes. Um, so the camera punches in. We have this slowdown moment to read what's happening. There's a punch. And then this is the money that I want to talk about. So they hit, they're going for this pose where the whole time he's pointing back to Spider-Man with his line of action. And we get to see Spider-Man get into this slow-mo of like, I'm gonna web sling you again. Now we get, get this hand coming out here to read it. And we're in a squash 
pose wise. Pose is pretty good. The, the feet are asymmetrical. You see how one's more towards us, one's away. A lot of people don't have that kind of dynamic posing in their work. So when you're thinking about building a shot like this, I think 70% of your work comes down to getting these kinds of poses first, getting, figuring out the angle of the camera that what you want to show and then building the pose and kind of reverse engineering from there, all of your breakdowns and your in-betweens to get into that position. Weight wise, we get this extension on the web, which we got to have that extension so we can pull it back. And he goes from this compressed shape into this awesome stretch. into a squash again, all in the air. Very clear silhouette with those hands up here. Anticipating, anticipating, launch into this stretch. This is very um, Olympic divey as well, so one thing I want to point out is this shot may initially be like, oh man, I could never make anything like this. It's so complicated. How could I ever come up with this? Keep in mind that the animator worked on this, probably spent two weeks to a month maybe working on this. Not sure what their schedule was, but they've, they've put a lot of time and planning into this to think about probably a lot, you know, uh, a lot of reference here with maybe Olympic uh, divers or gymnasts to get these kinds of poses. The other way that they're getting these poses is probably comic books. You've, I mean, this looks familiar to me. This has probably been in the Spider-Man comic. So it's not 100% the animator, one, one animator doing all this work here. They're, I mean, they're looking at the reference. The comic book artists have found cool poses for them before. They're looking at real life reference to see how they can sell the physics of this. And they've got a team of people helping them as well because they got the leads and the soup checking over their work, making it better, giving notes. So don't feel like this is outside of your wheelhouse. Uh, if you feel like you're ready for a demo reel shot, like you've started to understand body mechanics at a, at a better level to start playing around with this. We get this, picking back up here, we get this amazing backflip. And, you know, we're cheating physics. That's part of the fun with animation is it doesn't always have to be realistic. So we're doing this really realistic Olympic diving board or gymnast move into floating. And I think, I don't mind the, the cheating of this um, for, for animation purposes. What I don't like, however, is that this pretty much doesn't move. Like I like if I'm gonna cheat something to keep having it go somewhere like dropping down a little bit because if I wanted to pop back up again at least I got him moving and then it's like I've got an anticipation here to pop him back up and do this cartoony Looney Tunes stuff you know so that's something that you should keep in mind when you're doing your dumb reel shots too is that you can cheat physics um, to do these really heroic things uh, but definitely keep in mind how you would make it more believable. And you'll see that again here at the start where, you know, he's doing all these moves and he really just, the camera kind of rotates and he never drops below this line. He stays on that line the whole time. I'm like, why doesn't he just drop down just, just a little bit? I mean, he can, he can, we can still read the hang time if he's just dropping a little bit and doing his thing. And then, you know, maybe when he does the pull on this guy, like he does here, maybe that's what pops him up and it makes it, you know, more organic and, and more impactful for an animation. So again, this looks very uh, Spider-Man comic book posy. That, that's very dynamic. And this punch is a little bit weak for me because because of this. So we get this great spacing through through here. It looks, I can't tell if it's motion blur here. It looks like it stops a little, but um, there's a great spacing jump in the hands here for the punch. And then it just kind of pops up 
it's okay, I guess. I want to see more body follow through though. Um, I would have liked to not see the contact. I would like to see the after for this hit. And instead of this pose, it would be straight into this, maybe even more extreme. His hand could come out here and there could be more twist in the chest so that that chest is already starting to go as this hand is delivered and then let that wrap around. What I do love is how, you know, he's almost on like a swivel here. He's just kind of spinning into this pose. We get that, that hand wrap around like you really hit. And then we get this drop, slow drop, like I'm talking about, which makes this feel so much better than the, the beginning part where he's just kind of floating in space um, and makes this feel epic. Uh, how would you do this slowdown if you were going to make a shot like this? Um, you could use time warp within Maya. So you could, what I, what I would probably do is animate this at normal speed. Slow-mo can be tricky because you don't want to like, you want to gradually go into it. You want to ease in and out of it when you do it so that it hooks back up into your, your full speed animation. So in that sense, I would want to animate everything at full speed and then go back in with time warp in the graph editor and ease into my slow-mo just right and ease out just right. And that way I have control out with over it without having to change my whole animation. So really, I want to put this in the context if someone wants to make a shot like this. Really, it's pose. I'm just going to draw here. Number one. Two. This is all like pose three for me. Four, five, yeah, let's say six. So there is a lot of, a fair amount of poses in there. It's not like we're doing three golden poses for an acting shot, but when you break it down and think of it in poses like this, you can think about how the shot was created and make it simpler for you to create something like it as well. You're saying, okay, he's gonna yank the guy, punch, hold, web sling, kick, squash down and launch up into the air. You could spend a month on this and create it and it would be epic and be amazing for your reel. And even if you spent a month just working on something like this or this into the kick, just, just a small segment of the animation, like two poses working in between there, trying to figure out the breakdowns, figure out the camera, figure out the the spacing and all this to make this work, you would learn a lot. And I don't see anybody really attempting that stuff. That wraps up part one of the Spider-Man animation analysis. But now I have a question for you. You've already heard a lot of animation insights from me in this, but what is your number one takeaway from this Spider-Man animation analysis? Share in the comments below. I'd love to talk with you about it and get to know your animation skills and your background. And remember that as an animator, giving feedback, sharing you know, your takeaways not only helps others, but it also helps you to remember and strengthen your own animation eye. So definitely share your number one key takeaway from this analysis in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell below for more just like this. And if you want to be part of the next live animation analysis, join the Rusty Animator Facebook group. Or you can click for part two of this animation analysis or another video that we have right here.